Hello, listeners of the 21st Century Work Life podcast. This is a mini episode to complement my chat with Maya yesterday. Uh, the episode was about taking time off when we're ill and working remotely. And we based that conversation on a chapter of the book Thinking Remote, which is a collection of blog posts that we wrote some time ago. So this is a complement to the last episode. So I hope you enjoy it and that it helps you to have that very important conversation with your team. Do look out for the reflection questions at the end of the chapter. And if you have any comments or any topics that you would like us to cover in future episodes, head over to virtualnotdistant.com and there's a contact form there. My name is Pilar Orti and I hope you enjoy this short read. Chapter 7. Sick and Tired. Working and not working in a remote team. In this chapter, Maya reminds us that people in remote teams also get sick, but that sick leave might be more difficult to take. This not only affects remote teams in our omni-screen work-life blend today. I can remember coming in on the tail end of a telephone conversation many years ago, the last time I worked in a co-located office. A colleague was talking on an external line. No, don't worry, we'll find out about that and deal with it. You just concentrate on getting well. It's fine. Poor you, keep warm and dressed. Let me know when you can about tomorrow. Take care. Once the receiver was replaced, shortly followed by, Oh, heck, Carol's off sick. That's a pain today of all days. And it was. Despite working in a shared office building, all of us had distinct roles and responsibilities. And while we natted frequently about non-work things, updating everyone else on our autonomous project work happened mainly in scheduled meetings. So exactly what needed doing on Carol's stuff that morning was far from obvious, even to her line manager. And poor Carol, huddled under her duvet with her medicine of choice, had no access to office files or documents, not even to email, which was pretty new to us then. Being off sick Presumably, Carol had woken to her alarm as usual on a dark November morning, and made a judgment call. She was a diligent, hard-working project manager who had been nursing a cold all week. But that day, she felt extra rough and had an escalating fever. Out of courtesy to her colleagues, she knew she had to decide pretty early on whether to come into the office or not. Should she get up and make herself presentable, then face a commute involving a brisk walk and two underground trains, taking just over an hour when she felt like this? Given the times and distances involved, and hers was below average for central London, she chose the paracetamol and her bed, and who can blame her? It was extra hassle for her manager, and indeed for all of the rest of us, to cancel her meetings and contact some clients, but we knew she would do the same for us. And who even knew whether she would be back in tomorrow? Meanwhile, perhaps it would be worth picking up some fizzy vitamin C drink or something at lunchtime, because Carol had been sniffing into tissues all week around our workplace with its shared refreshment facilities, central heating and meeting rooms. The department would be in big trouble if anyone else went down with the flu. Sickness absence and remote teams. It is hardly surprising then that remote teams have a measurably lower rate of overall sickness absence than co-located ones, as high as 68% improvement. Furthermore, when a commute to a distant office is involved, inevitably the absence has to be measured in whole days, even for things such as a scheduled appointment which happens at an inconvenient time. Home-based workers find it far easier to lock back on again if they feel better a couple of hours later, and not lose the entire day. Indeed, every manager knows that an undefined proportion of off-sick days are not quite what they appear on the face of it. 
most businesses still do not have a policy or culture of emergency personal leave. As such, if an employee has a domestic or family emergency to deal with, the only way they might be able to handle it is to call in sick at work. Whereas a home-based worker can keep an eye on their sick kids or wait for the plumber without any drop in their productivity. However, it would be a mistake to blithely assume that a remote team equals fewer days of sick, and that is all you need to think about. While some of that 68% difference can be explained by spurious sickies and reduced exposure to viruses in the office and on public transport, remote workers still become unwell from time to time. So, Remote teams which have negligible recorded sickness absence might need to look a little bit more closely at what is really happening. Balancing needs and commitments One of the greatest reported drawbacks to working from home is a blurring of boundaries between work and home life. When managing acute or chronic illness, this can have both positive and negative consequences. Sure, you don't have to decide first thing in the morning whether to be off sick or not, but perhaps that would be much harder to do anyway. If your work can be literally done from your bed, how ill do you have to be before you feel you can say that you're unfit to do it? And when you have access to work files, email and collaboration tools via the smartphone on your bedside table, it is pretty much expected that however close you are to death's door, you will at least put the fires out before taking yourself online for the rest of the day, divert calls, rearrange diaries, and rapidly brief colleagues on emergency action on crucial projects, even asynchronously. Plus, you don't have to worry about spreading your germs over your internet connection. Of course, this makes the absence far easier to manage organizationally and might make it easier to take badly needed rest with a clearer conscience. But for knowledge workers these days, it becomes increasingly difficult to genuinely unplug from it all when that might be what is badly needed. Reading the signals For managers of remote teams, it can be much harder to spot and deal with impending or complicated health problems. Going back to Carol, her manager, however frustrated, was not entirely surprised when she rang in sick because she had been looking like hell all week. Indeed, if she had dragged herself in that morning, it is quite likely that someone would have sent her straight home again as soon as they set eyes on her. And that is the one thing which does not tend to happen in a virtual team. In virtual or remote teams, people have to tell their colleagues what is going on for them and how they feel. This means that the manager, indeed the whole organization, has a responsibility to create a culture where that is genuinely safe and okay to do. A team where people can bring their whole self to work, the good and the really not so good today, in a non-judgmental setting. A team where people are trusted to judge when they need to take the day off because they are not well enough to work. For hybrid organizations, the matter can be further confused by a perception that working from home is a kind of easier or soft option. In the UK, remote working is often considered as a reasonable adjustment under the Equalities Act 2010 for staff suffering from stress and depression or managing chronic illness. The FIT note, which replaced the sick note, or the return to work plan offered by FIT for Work, provides options for people to continue working in a different capacity instead of going off sick entirely. Working from home is one of these options. While this has many benefits for people whose health or disability makes accessing a traditional workplace challenging, we contend that all the benefits of remote work should be available to everyone who wants it, and that it most certainly does not correlate with taking things easy. True equality surely means each person being able to define their own needs for a working environment, team communications and meaningful professional activity. Being able to say, I have flu, I am unplugging for at least the next three days or I have a headache, hopefully I will catch up this evening but for now I can't look at a screen without 
any defensiveness or expectation of judgment. Or, in Carol's case, without the need to put on that slightly weak, wobbly, tired-sounded voice that doubtless she found herself unnecessarily adopting when she rang in that morning. If you are having one of those rubbishy days, at least you do not have to hole out to commute in the dark. Wrap up warm, take plenty of fluids, and keep your germs to yourself. The chances are you will be back on your feet more quickly than your commuting colleagues and ready to get back to work. But not before you are truly ready. Leadership Reflections As a team leader, reflect on your own behaviour and attitudes and how they affect psychological safety within your team when it comes to taking time off sick. 1. Do you model the behaviour you expect by being open about your own needs, asking for help when you are feeling poorly and taking time off when needed? Encouraging open conversations about physical and mental health and acknowledging how that affects the work is important. As is saying to colleagues, I am logging off the shared drive now and will put out of office on my personal inbox for the rest of the day, so everyone else knows that it is definitely okay when they need to do so. 2. Do you encourage people to bring their whole selves to work and share what is going on for them, good and bad? Fostering that closeness and concern and making individuals visible as well as their work helps everyone anticipate good and bad days in themselves and in others, and for managers, it means fewer surprises. And three, do you help people protect their boundaries and meet their own needs by not rewarding martyrdom and self-sacrifice, encouraging them to take the time they need to be happy and well when they need to? You can signal this by calling out good examples in other team members publicly. Remember, Anna's going to be blasting through her reports today as she has to leave early for her theatre group. And dealing privately with any insecurities or productivity issues with specific individuals. A big thank you for listening to the 21st Century Work Life podcast, produced by Virtual Not Distant. If you have something to add to the conversation, let us know through the contact form over at virtualnotdistant.com. I have been your host, Pilar Orti, and I'm signing off now. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, enjoy. Enjoy.